So in this episode of the podcast Creator Sub, what I want to be doing is I'm going to be answering a question, which is what software do I need to edit a video podcast? So this is a great question. Software is something that many people, when they're thinking about starting that video podcast and they want to get in front of people, the first thing they think about after they, well, second thing, after they think about equipment, they then think about software. And so I want to unpack that in this. I'm going to talk about the two pieces of software I use for my video podcast. I'm also going to show you. So if you're listening to this, come over to the YouTube channel, watch it. Um, we're going to, I'm going to show you the ones I use and how I use them. And so we can unpack it in a little bit more detail. Let's do it. So the very first thing, one of the very first piece of software I want to look at is StreamYard. Okay. Now StreamYard is the um, software that I use to record all my video podcasts, both in my business and also for this channel. In fact, what I'm creating right now is being produced on StreamYard. It's a live streaming piece of software that allows you to bring in guests, brand it up, does loads of things. But what I'm going to show you in this episode and that I haven't done before is I'm actually going to screen share my specific StreamYard and show you what is in it. Because for me, quick my neck for me there is um, a lot of different moving parts that are that i use and so i'm going to screen share it with you it's gonna look really strange so do bear with um but it will it, and it, it will be quite weird because you're going to see screen within a screen but i want to show you how i use Streamyard myself so we're going to do that right now so this is Streamyard up on the screen here and this is what it looks like when you log into it now of course bear, bear with the screen being in the corner because that's exactly what it's what it's gonna look like in general i wonder if i can do press that no it doesn't look any better um, there's gonna be trying to find the best ones for it is still that one um so what you why i like Streamyard so much for editing is that you don't have to edit at all really that's the beauty of Streamyard because if you do enough programming with the branding and the colors you'll be okay for example and then you just talk and then you can do stuff afterwards. So for example, with StreamYard, you can use these these buttons here across the bottom and they'll be they'll allow you to change the layouts. So we can see quite quickly on the screen here if I press this button it changes the layout to that, changes it to this, changes it to that, brings full screen. So we're getting these different dynamic layouts which can all be done which is effectively editing in real time, which is one of my reasons why I love it. So that's using these buttons all across the bottom. Now other things you can do as well, you can bring in other other screens. So you have here the camera that I'm using. You also have the screen share I'm doing as well as the slides that I've been that I use to um, to bring up on the screen. So you can see that those slides are there as well. You actually if you go down to the pre present, you can you can bring in video files, you can bring in extra camera, you can bring in slides as well as screen share. So the editing you can effectively this video is edited with the right right type of equipment and software together which is my logitech um, curve keyboard and my logitech um, max ergo mouse i combine that with a stream deck and then Streamyard, and i'm able to do a lot of kind of you know the moving of the screen and all this stuff now if i show you over onto the right hand side you're able to see the brand section which is the bit that i'm most fascinated about when it comes to uh, podcast editing in real time so if i zoom over to here you see that the brand color so i can change the colors of all of the fonts and subscribe so it allows me then to create um, subscribe buttons you, you can see if i bring myself full screen you can see that i've created that that's all been created by pressing the button on and off in Streamyard, so it's all been done in one place you can add logos so i've got the con the podcast creators hub logo there i can turn it on and off and that's going to allow me to um to brand it up i have different brands for different podcasts as well so you see here these are some of the businesses podcasts that i run um and that's my main show and then another show that i'm a co-host with and then this show as well as and you can have overlays as well now this is the bit i love the most i've got oh i love i love all of it the most it's so cool but if you look at this we have my intro that i play at the beginning of the show and i also have b-roll programmed in so if i press this one which is like pod two it brings up a podcast person speaking i can have listen one and that's going to bring up people listening and it's all programmed into here so it's all stuff i've pre-edited in software and then had it programmed in even down to this stuff, which is things like um, StreamYard demos, which I've had already. I pressed the button already and it brings up the demo. This is all preloaded in. Now, what this does is means that if I want to speak about something, if I want to um, use something, think about I'm talking about something and I want to demonstrate it on the screen, I already have a lot of things that, are that I would say often preloaded. 
So it means the video has this this dynamic feel to it, which which it wouldn't have had if I was just recording it and then I edit it. And bear in mind that if this video right now, it's four minutes, 57 seconds, this video is four minutes, 57 seconds. It took me four minutes and 57 seconds to edit it whilst making it. Now, yes, this is hard to do if you're not somebody who's used to doing it, but it's a bit like playing the piano. You learn the keys, you learn the pedals, and eventually you're very, very good at it. So it's something I'd highly recommend. There's loads of other stuff as well. There is stuff like music, um, which I normally use music, but I found out that the music really hit my internet bandwidth. So I'm just waiting for a cat, a cat eight cable to arrive. And when that arrives, um, I will then be replacing it and I'll be bringing in more stuff so that it can deal with it. Um, I, I, I upgraded all my internet. I upgraded all my internet. This is something for a video podcast through streaming to think about. I upgraded all my internet, but didn't upgrade the cabling system within the run through it. So I was still running cat five E through everything and then wondering why it wasn't working. Um, so this is still for cat five E and that's why some of sometimes the visuals dip. Um, but it, it is, it's going to be replaced and that's why I'm kind of laying off the heavy duty stuff while I'm creating it. So that is StreamYard. And like I said, that is StreamYard. That is the one that I'm using right now. I absolutely love it. It records in video, records in audio. It does a ton of great things. So, and as you said, you can even with it, like it's the same as if you're bringing in a guest. So if I was to bring in a guest now, I could actually bring in an extra camera and um, do that here. And look, you'll be able to see this is what it would look like if I had a guest in the show. So I can have different guest angles all created in this one platform and it's just clicking buttons with my mouse. So it's super, super efficient and effective. I want to remove that because I don't I don't actually need that on screen. So that's the, my main editing software for video podcasting. It's about doing it all in one hit, outros, intros, all loaded in and um, and just go for it. Now, the thing that I would say if there's another piece of software that I do use, and th this is if I want to do light editing or I do video or my reels, Instagram reels, I record these videos, I get the raw video from it, and then I upload it into Instagram, into my Instagram reels. And that software is actually called Descript. You may have heard me talk about it a lot. I'm going to screen share Descript as well. Um, this means I'm going to have to come off the screen for this. So I have no idea what you're going to see while we're doing it, but I'm going to screen share Descript at the same time. So um, this is what Descript looks like. Now, Descript, the reason that I like Descript a lot is that you you can record you know the video into it directly um which is is fine you can do that you can also um you can also upload a video into it so you could record your video in in StreamYard and then you can upload it here from here though you are able to edit you by literally highlighting and deleting the text so the video will play and then you you can edit via the text it also Get a lot, gives you some some wicked functions like this which is um word gaps and then it says if you can see here shorten all word gaps and if i press apply to all it removes all gaps in the video that are longer than 0 0.3 seconds so that means if you're somebody who's talking lots and and you know and you and you have lots of your pauses or you want to say something then read something and then have a little break you can do that it also has the function to remove filler words which is all ums and ahs so it removes all of those as well so you can do it on a quick hit that and, it, and it's very simple the reason i like it though is i actually can highlight an area of the text i can right click and i can press duplicate new composition and that's going to duplicate to a new video now I've, you would have seen there are already some in here i'm able then to turn the clips from the long form video into shorts and brand them up completely so you can see that here that this is a, a short taken and it's added my subtitles, everything there, which is all added in here via subtitles and captions. So I am a big fan of Descript because what I love about Descript is that I think that it's a um, it, it's a really good supporting software that I use for my supporting content. But the only thing I would say with it compared to StreamYard is that it's not as fast. StreamYard is super fast and that's the bit where I'm able to make so much content every single day is because I, I have a setup and I'll do a video. I'm sure I'll do an episode on that, on how I, on my setup and what I have in here, because there's a lot of systems I use and I'm sure I'll end up doing a long form masterclass on how I do this. But um, uh, there's a lot of things like my Logitech Curve keyboard that has, um, is it Craft Keyboard? Sorry, my Logitech Craft Keyboard. I can never remember the right name of it. But I use a lot of different things that, that allow me to do, make stuff in real time that still looks very edited. 
but those are the software that I'd recommend any video podcaster who's looking to get into this space. Don't worry about over editing. You don't need to be a video editor and understand Adobe. You just literally need to be able to produce something that is visually pleasing to your audience because at the end of the day, your listeners and the people who are listening to the show, they're the ones who are going to like it. And it's not about what you do with it. It's about what they see at the end. So if you enjoyed this one, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye.